So, okay, we, we do not see, seem, it seems the DG is not here yet here with us. But Dr. Isa Yaya, if you perhaps want to give your good <coughs> message now, the head of legal of uh, NASDRA. I believe I. Yes, please, Dr. Isa Yaya, you can carry on, sir. Oh. It's all right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. We can hear you, sir. Please carry on with your good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Your message. We are delighted at the National Peace Research and Development Agency. We are highly delighted of this uh, very novel uh, intervention. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, apologies, Doctor. Apologies, Doctor Isaiah. Just a minute, uh, Doctor Isaiah. Yeah. Uh, kindly, uh, just a minute, sir. Just so that we urge others, we kindly want to urge everyone who is on this call. If you are not speaking, please you kindly mute so um, we can hear the speakers clearly. So, Doctor Isaiah, you can carry on now, sir. We want to just be sure everyone is muted. Please carry on, Doctor Isaiah. All right. Thank you very much. As I was saying before. On our part from the agency, we are delighted that uh, Madam Ann is actually coming out with a book of this nature at this auspicious time. For us, this is a very novel idea, and uh, it is very, very innovative, and uh, inter it's an intervention uh, a move and a gesture that is applauded at the agency. Uh, I spoke with my DG earlier on in the morning, and I know too well that uh, Anne equally spoke to him. I do know very soon he will join us and uh, he will give his uh, good message before the closure of uh, this event. As I have said before, the agency uh, is obligated by law uh, to regulate and operationalize indigenous space system. By that, it means therefore that uh, on behalf of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, NASDA is positioned to ensure that a space regulation is given the pride of place in this country. That means, therefore, that all the United Nations treaties and all the conventions signed by this country is giving life, is giving implementation. Uh... Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Hello? Hello, I, we can hear you. Sir. All the treaties and conventions, all the treaties and conventions signed by Nigeria, uh, the agency is positioned to ensure that uh, those conventions are given, uh, uh, to ensure that they are implemented to the letter. Therefore, what Anne has done for us at the agency is like uh, a complimentary but it is applauded. It therefore means that as novel as space experience, uh, exploration is on the, planet, um, on the planet of Africa, Anne has come to expose this frontier. Anne has thrown in another, another light to the mass of uh, education in this regard. And we continue to appreciate our efforts. And for me, as the head of Lugo department in the agency, uh, we have a retinue of space lawyers in the agency, and we have other lawyers who came in recently and whose uh, passion and desire to learn more in the space agency is on parallel. And so we see this book, we see this endeavor by Anne as a dream come true, and we continue to appreciate you in this regard. I want to sincerely thank all of you, and most especially, I want to thank Anne for taking this bull by the horn at the proper time of launch, we shall actually uh, uh, make our speech. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I stand on existing protocols established by the most able chairman. So on behalf of Ulisabakobo Legal, OEL, and the Space Law Practice Team, we welcome you all, our distinguished guests, audience, the book launch of Space Law 101 for Beginners. 
authored by the very amiable and brilliant space law subject matter expert, Anne Agui. So why space law? I mean, this is a relatively new area within, and with the advent of technology, huge opportunities exist in the development of our space activities that can significantly contribute to the growth of our economy. Anne is a member of our space law practice group that seeks to collaborate with the National Space Research and Development Agency, NASTRA, the agency charged with regulating Nigerian space activities. So part of what we have to do is to examine and harmonize all the regulatory, legal, and institutional frameworks for current and emerging challenges in the space sector. The book covers a range of evolving space activities beyond the launch of satellites, which is typically what we all think about when we hear the word space. It's also a guide for lawyers, space enthusiasts and policymakers, and generally for us all. So as the program progresses, we shall be better informed and delighted to the benefits space can offer us as individuals and our society at large. So we at OEL once again welcome you all and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Ms. Yvonne uh, Ezekiel, for that welcome. And thank you, of course, at OEL for providing the, as it were, the enabling environment for us to be gathered together today to learn more about space law. So at this juncture, we'll be calling on our very erudite author herself, Ms. Anne Regiegi, to tell us about the book. So our um, able author, the floor is yours. We want to hear the story behind the story at this point. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anne Regi Agi. Can you all hear me? Yes, go on, please. So I was, I was saying uh, um, I became an accidental uh, space lawyer uh, when I was privileged to host students uh, for a space law competition. So I had to read up as much as I could about the subject and I found that it was one that interested me a lot so I decided to do some research into it and then I discovered that uh, it was an interesting field and when I spoke to a few of my colleagues lots of them didn't quite know what it was so uh, I tried to speak to them about it and uh, most of them would tell you we don't know anything about it so I did some more research and upon our return from a competition in the United States I said to myself I and our colleagues we formed a foundation called Land Space Foundation where we do space awareness and so being a lawyer I decided to uh, further the interest in space law and then I researched into it and when I spoke to my colleagues and they said they didn't know much, I said to myself, I have to find a way to share this interesting knowledge I have with everybody. So I looked at a couple of space books and they were all so voluminous. So I said, I have to find a way to compress this into the valid points that my colleagues can read and understand. Space is in the new frontier. We have laws. The United Nations is very much interested in space. There are a couple of treaties, five treaties, space treaties that regulate outer space activities, tells you that space is a human commons, is a common heritage of mankind. No nation can claim sovereignty in space. And there are huge benefits. Space, I mean, we are talking on Zoom now because of space technology, because of satellites that uh, can help us uh, speak to each other we can talk of space technology because we have satellites in space because some people undertook to do some research and exploration into space but as humans venture into space the question is should it be a site free for all should we do as we like up there uh, should everybody just claim every part of it the faster you can get up there the better you can claim this is where law comes in space law is basically coming in to regulate the activity of all spacefarers, wars and disagreements we have down here, that we do not take these challenges up to space. Because if something falls on our heads uh, from space because we are at war, there will be a challenge. So basically, space law comes in to with competing interests because materials on the moon. So as we try to mine these things, as we try to explore, to know more about God's creations, we must be careful to maintain this balance, you know, between uh, competing interests. So that's what uh, engaged, um, that's what made me put this book together to ignite the interests of the legal community and policymakers. There's an entire uh, 
structure on, on policy, space law and policy, to ignite our interest and to pursue this field of law. We've been doing lots of work with NASDA, and I, I must tell you, they have been very receptive, they have been very cooperative. So reading this book will help you understand how you can partner with such an organization, the space agency, to improve the space sector. There are so many benefits Nigeria as a country can gain from space activities, and we cannot begin to tap into these uh, benefits except we understand the laws that regulate the sector, that regulate the industry worldwide and in our country. And that is why uh, I wrote this book for my colleagues and policymakers, and even for law students to lecturers and all. So, I intend that uh, copies of this book will be placed in law libraries across our faculties. And so I most respectfully all of you who have joined me to please launch generously so we can have to get interested in the sector uh, erudite uh, space lawyers thank you very much now we're going to hear a lot more about that from our book reviewer today who is dr olisa abakoba represented by mrs yvonne mrs yvonne um, Ezekiel. She is the managing partner of Olisa Abakoba Legal. So she'll be representing Dr. Olisa today. So Mrs. Yvonne, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. And uh, once again, welcome all of you. Unfortunately, Dr. Abakoba cannot be here today, but he's done an extensive book review and he's presented his papers to me, which I would obviously share with you now. So um, but we'll go into a little bit of history um, as a bit of background to the, the book review. Now, the global space industry has had a checkered history. The first space race was a 20th century competition between cold, two Cold War wars, and which is the United uh, States of America, and USSR as it was then known or Soviet Union as we know it today. And the objective was to achieve superior space flight capability. It also had its origins in the ballistic missiles based nuclear arms race between the two nations following the Second World War. The race ended with American footprints firmly planted on the moon. Neil Armstrong's immortal words, one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. And also the eventual collapse of the United of the Soviet Union, which was unable to keep up with the space, both economically and technologically. The second space race is far more complex than the first. It is driven mostly by commercialization and led by emerging economic powers like China, India, United Arab Emirates, and risk-taking private citizens such as Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson and then a handful of entrepreneurs and investors. The global entrance to this race are ushering in new generation small satellite capabilities with enormous value to commercial and government customers, including organizations in energy, mining, manufacturing, transportation, finance, agriculture, and communications. Now, Thousands of satellites will be produced and launched into the next decade. The nations that win this race will also gain the 21st century military edge, much like the aviation leaders did in the 20th century. And then they will take advantage of the space, which is nearly 3 million in terms of value. As the late Professor Stephen Hawking once said, the future of mankind is in space. It is therefore important that the legal community, particularly in Nigeria, become acquainted with the foundational principles of space law. Anagi has written a great and easy to understand book aptly titled Space Law 101 for Beginners, which is really a brief introduction to space law. This book comes highly recommended. The book discusses the core concept of space law, as well as recent developments. Lawyers, students, and space enthusiasts will find all of the information and guidance needed to understand and deal with the legal issues and practical consequences that arise from the major space treaties in a concise and comprehensive manner. In light of the many new developments in the field, 
Anne's book provides a clear overview of the legal aspects of the wide range of current and evolving space activities. It provides a concise yet comprehensive guide for lawyers, policymakers, academics, students, and professionals. And it does not matter if you have no legal background. The book is that simple to understand. So it covers a wide range of issues and the analysis is thorough and will provide even knowledgeable readers with new perspective. The book discusses space law, space law sources, the treaties, the latest developments, and challenges affecting international space law. The most prominent of which is the commercialization of space law by the private sector. The involvement of private sector in space has raised many new legal issues, including questions about liability and intellectual property rights. As the book demonstrates, the current outer space treaties are largely obsolete and incapable of dealing with legal issues arising from the commercial use of space. Anne Ogi, the author, is a space law enthusiast, a lawyer and a lecturer at the University of Calabar, and she has a certificate in space law from International Academy of Space Law. She's a member of the International Institute of Space Law and also the president and co-founder of the Lens Space Foundation, which is a non-profit organization dedicated to space education and awareness. We applaud Anne as she undeniably demonstrates hard work in the extensive research put into this book. I found the book to be informative, enriching, and easy to read. And I would recommend it to all who Mark, love space. Uh, Sign Dr. Lisa Bakova, senior partner, space yeah, partner, Bakova Legal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mrs. Yvonne Ezekiel. May I also quickly say that Dr. Zabakaba has sent a message to me that on for his return, he shall engage Anne directly and communicate his support to Anne personally. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. We recognize that from the Lanner Silk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Mark.